Today is a day that I was hoping to avoid at least until the end of the season, uh, but it seems that we've blown up the 2JZ NAT in the 36. So I got all the plugs pulled out and did a compression test. Uh, because when I went to pull it off the trailer after this last drift event, it wouldn't start. And it did have trouble starting uh, Sunday morning of the drift event, but I was able to get it running. And uh, after a minute of giving it some throttle, it was fine and stayed running. Um, but then didn't want to start uh, the next day when I went to unload it. So I went ahead and did a compression test and the results are not good. So in cylinder one, we had 145 uh, not a huge deal there, seems within range. Uh, in cylinder two, we only had 100, which is pretty low, um, but maybe there's something we could do about that. Cylinder three was 155, uh, cylinder four was 90, and cylinder five was zero. Absolutely no compression whatsoever in cylinder five, but cylinder six had 150. So I was uh, obviously very concerned about cylinder five. I did essentially a leak down test and forced air into the cylinder with it at top dead center. And all the air just rushed out of cylinder six. You could feel the air coming out of the open spark plug hole from cylinder six. Uh, so it's really hard to say what's causing it. My first thought was head gasket. Uh, if the head gasket was blown between cylinder five and six, then the compression could escape into cylinder six. But if that were the case, then I would have low compression on cylinder six as well because it would be leaking into cylinder five. So I'm not really sure at this point. I'm thinking probably valves. I did put a camera down in cylinder five and didn't see any holes in the piston or anything. Uh, but either way, regardless of what the problem is, the head is gonna have to come off. So. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to rip off the head and figure out what is wrong with this engine. I'm going to interrupt this video real quick to let you guys know that I finally have my own shirts. There's a limited supply of this 2JZ NAT shirt, so make sure to pick one up before they're sold out. They're a super soft, lightweight, 100% cotton t-shirt. You can find them at tasicperformance.com, link in the description. Okay, we don't have the head off yet, but I've already spotted uh, what is most likely the problem. It's probably going to be hard for you guys to tell, uh, but these two valves right here are the two intake valves for cylinder five. You can see how far that bucket is sticking up, but that one is not. It's still down in there, which means it's stuck open. So I'm going to finish getting the head off uh, and then we can inspect the valves and see why that one is stuck open. Well, that's not good. Every single one of the pistons has some weird uh, like chew marks. I don't know, it's hard to describe, but definitely not good. I don't know if uh, they've been hitting the valves or what the heck caused that, but very strange. All right, so we got everything tore down and then I was talking to Michael about it and uh, I told him how the screw was stuck in the valve and I had no idea where the screw came from and he suggested possibly the throttle body, which 
I was, wasn't a hundred percent sure if there were even screws inside of the throttle body that could come off, but figured I would go ahead and take a look at it. And sure enough, one of the screws came out of the throttle plate and got sucked into the engine. So if you guys buy aftermarket throttle bodies or even with stock ones, definitely make sure you take those screws out, put some Loctite on them and put them back in. I had never even thought about doing that. I just bought the throttle body and installed it. I uh, didn't realize that the screw would possibly work itself out. So, But like I said, I don't think the screw is what really caused uh, all the damage to the pistons. Um, because the damage is on all of the pistons. It was probably a detonation issue. Maybe it was running lean at some point. Maybe it was uh, running really rich at some point. It's hard to say, but either way, we need new pistons. And I've done some thinking and I've got some big plans in the future, but for now there's three events left this year that I want to do. So I just wanted a quick solution to get the car back up and running. And I happened to have the VVTi block with the rods and pistons from when I first did this install. I used a VVTi head on a non-VVTi bottom end, if you guys remember that. So I had the whole spare block. Uh, now the pistons in the VVTi are supposedly a little bit weaker. There's not as much material between the top ring and the top of the piston, so people do break ring lands on them. But I've seen people who drift them with 600 horsepower and uh, don't have any issues. So I'm hoping that they'll get me through at least three events and then we can look at upgrading in the future. Uh, so I got the pistons out of the engine, got them all cleaned up. Definitely in uh, much better shape than the pistons that are currently in the engine. So next on the agenda, we have to get the block out of the engine so I can get the oil pan off and get the pistons out of the current block. Not entirely sure how I'm going to get it out uh, without the head on because I usually uh, strap a chain to the head. Uh, but I'll figure something out and I'll let you guys know. Uh, I've got everything disconnected already. The starter, all the wires, the transmission is disconnected. So we should be ready to hook it up and pull it out. Okay, so we got the engine out. I just took one of the uh, engine mount bolts out on each side and strapped the chain to those. The only issue with that is uh, the chain was too far forward and with the transmission on it, the transmission's really heavy. So it wanted to pick up the front of the engine and uh, not pick up the transmission with the engine. So it was kind of a pain to get it out, but we got it out. Um, my goal is to just leave the transmission on the car if I can, or on the engine. I don't want to have to take it off. Hopefully I can just drop the oil pan, uh, yank the rods and pistons, get the new pistons on, slap them back in. Uh, but to do that, I'm going to have to have it elevated. And if I'm not taking the transmission off, I can't put it on an engine stand. So uh, I'm going to find a way to get it up in the air and get it level so I can actually work on it uh, and then get the oil pan taken off. Probably not every day you see a uh, engine supported on sawhorses. Uh, seems to be working out actually better than I expected. I'm going to leave it hooked up to the chain uh, for safety just in case it were to try to tip off of the sawhorses. But the way it is now, I can move the chain around, I can get each piston in, and I have enough clearance to get the oil pan off. So we should be good. Well, we've got a slight change of plans. I didn't realize, but two of the bolts for the transmission adapter plate went into the oil pan right here. Uh, so I could not take the oil pan off without taking the transmission off. 
And of course, after taking the transmission off, I figured if I was that far, I might as well put it on the engine stand, which will make life a lot easier. But I had to take off the clutch and uh, the special extended flywheel in order for it to fit on the engine stand. So we had a whole uh, debacle there, added about an hour extra worth of work. But at the end of the day, it's going to be better this way anyways. We can uh, clean the mating surfaces better before we RTV everything instead of trying to do it over my head. So it'll work out. I've got it on the stand now. The oil pan's off so we can start pulling and replacing the pistons. All right, we got all the pistons in, the oil pan is back on, it's all RTV'd, so we just have to let that cure for 24 hours before we put oil in it. So I made sure to do that right away. Uh, unfortunately, I have to reuse the head gasket. Uh, I just wouldn't be able to get a new one in time. Um, so I sprayed it with some copper spray. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I'm hoping it'll be fine and won't cause any problems, but we'll never know until we get this thing back together and get it started. So everything's ready to go. We're going to put the head on, put the cams back in, uh, button up the engine, put the trans back on it, and then we can throw it in the car. All right, so Michael came over, he helped me uh, get the engine back together real quick. We got the transmission on it, so it's ready to go back in the car. Stick it in there real quick and then all we got to do is hook everything up and try to start it. So I got the fuel pumps disconnected so it doesn't start. I just want to crank it and build some oil pressure first.
pumps and we'll see if it starts. Just making sure I don't have any fuel leaks. The uh, fuel pressure regulator seems a little louder than normal. I did relocate it. Something I haven't connected the drive shaft yet. All right, I connected the slave cylinder uh, on the clutch, so we're gonna try it again with the clutch pressed in and see if that makes a difference. Is definitely a success it doesn't want to idle too great by itself uh, yet which I barely gave it a chance to warm up um, but the biggest thing is we have a big vacuum leak from the wastegate line uh, there was a hole melted in it so I need to replace that real quick and put the uh, catch can lines on uh, the noise from the transmission slash flywheel not sure what it is uh, now that I think about it, I think it's always been there. I just never really noticed it before because it only happens uh, at startup or at low RPM. You couldn't hear it at all while I was revving. It revved really good, sounds really healthy. So yeah, we're just going to button everything back up and it should be ready to rip.